Uh, Jennifer Evans Cowley from Ohio State had organized a panel at our uh, academics con annual academics conference, uh, Association of uh, Collegiate Schools of Planning. She or organized the panel to be a discussion on about generally about distance learning, and so I wanted to hear about some of the experiences. Uh, one school in particular. Uh, University of Florida is offering a fully online master's degree in planning which is the first of its kind so everybody was kind of interested to hear how that was going and other schools that had ventured into uh, into distance learning just to say you know what's what's, what's happening out there how, how are things going is this the future does this does this work for planning because the other question for planning in particular being uh, practice oriented um, and when we, uh, a lot of the, uh, the skill building happens through workshops and kind of hands-on projects working with the community, does that really lend itself to, you know, to an online, uh, you know, uh, format? And so, uh, and then I think it was Jennifer that brought up the question about, is anybody thinking about a, a MOOC, you know, with, with these things really kind of popping up? And, and um, uh, I don't think there was any response, but then her, her, her and I and, uh, and, and a colleague from Georgia Tech, who was actually my advisor when I, when I was there um, some 20 plus years ago, um, uh, said, you know, that's a terrific idea uh, because the planning profession is trying to do a lot of, well, we have certification maintenance and, you know, because it's a professional organization, a lot of continuing education said this is, this is, a, this is a very good tool for us to be considering. And so um, then as, you know, as, as it kind of worked out, it ended up being Jennifer and I uh, going back and forth on this. And then really within the matter of, I think within the matter of like two weeks, it was submitted and approved by Coursera and it was up and we said, wow, that's exciting. <laughs> and then uh, I think it was, uh, uh, I think after it went, after the, uh, the, you know, the course had been, had been posted, you know, we, we, we had a thousand signups within, you know, it was probably like a month or so, something like that. At first Jennifer told me, well, we could probably expect 10,000 or so. I said, well, I think that, you know, we can aspire to that. I don't think that's going to happen. But we're probably going to be at 10,000 or more by May. And kind of the, and the interesting thing at this point, even though this is still an experiment for Jennifer and I, is that to, uh, you know, to scale this up, if we add another 100 students, it's like, like well, where are we going to put them? You know, uh, we don't, you know, you don't run into those, sort, those sorts of issues. I think the, uh, the concern is that, the model that we set up, um, you know, that we can still promote and encourage engagement among all, you know, all of the students. But still, when you think about scale, that still, sh you know, shouldn't be a challenge, um, uh, regardless of what the, of what the numbers are. Because if you can get, you know, if we can get some of these smaller groups, whether they're geographically based or whether they're topically based, what you know, whatever it might be, I think that's one of that that engagement and those connections are something that we're you know that we're really trying to push hard on for the for the class